Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sarfid Bayraktar. I work for Cisco Systems. My colleague Tim Evans and I have been working on uh, some routing analytic project in the last year or so, and I wanted to share some of the insights we have received, and uh, we're hoping that this will start a whole new area for application developers. So what do I mean by BGP-enabled application development? So BGP is used in almost every network, and it, BGP data is a collection of IP addresses and attributes. These attributes actually carry an underappreciated amount of intelligence about the network, where the prefix has been, what the services are, um, and developers actually can use this data to write a variety of applications to monitor and manage their networks. And by developers, I mean both the network engineers, as in the traditional sense, or the development uh, DevOps uh, in the new era. Um, however, the routing analysis is a hard task. Collecting data, storing data, uh, parsing it, making sense out of it is hard. Um, the project we've been working on is Cisco Internet Data Analytics. It's basically a framework that I'll be showing you today. Uh, to observe and learn the network behavior. It has both real-time and historic components to it, and it's composed of collection, storage, analyze, and presentation of the data. I think for this talk, what's important is how we present the data to the application developers to see what they can do with that data. Um, we are aiming to expose all the BGP data, different address families, and each address family actually corresponds to a service carried by BGP plus uh, IGP topology information. So if you're running OSPF uh, or ISIS, uh, we can receive this information via BGP and uh, use that in our analysis. Uh, our aim is to support both the scripter and the developer. Scripters can use curl and bash to inter uh, interact with this data. It's really simple. Or we have a full suite of APIs that I'll be showing you. Uh, I guess it makes sense to talk about where it fits in the world of SDN. Um, uh, programmable networks. Oh, it's coming from there? Okay. All right. Uh, you know, when we talk about programmable networks, SDN, uh, there are uh, five components to it, really. So in order to program the network, you need to know how the network is behaving so you can change it. And that requires collecting data from the network, sifting through the data to see what's happening. And then the applications are really going to be in the heart of SDN. Perhaps it's not as clear to a wide uh, range of people yet, but it, they will be. Because they are the ones that will be helping make the decisions, create policies. Uh, uh, these will be uh, fed into an orchestrator, such as uh, Open Daylight uh, Orchestrator. And then the orchestrator pushes the policies back to network for uh, uh, realizing the service that you want to have. And then obviously you have to continually monitor the network. So the work we're uh, going to show you uh, is uh, both the analytics and the applications part. So well, what took us so long to do that? VGP has been around from the start, and it's been very important, and the networks have been using that. Um, well, we had to wait for a couple of key technologies come into being together. So uh, it's a culmination of a group of key technologies. The first one has something to do with how you collect the data. And uh, traditionally, in order to get BGP data, you need a BGP session to a router with that data. Uh, well, that means the administrators will have to go and configure that BGP session. That means touching the network, touching the routers, and that's never been a fun thing for the operators to do. Uh, we are utilizing the main technology we use in our project is BGP monitoring protocol, which allows us to collect data from one router, but accessing multiple peers at the same time, and I'll show you what that means. Uh, also, the IGP information traditionally has not been uh, part of the BGP data, but in the last few years at IETF, there's been, a, there's been work around how to put the IGP data into a BGP packet, and then hence the BGP LS address family was born. Now you can put your IGP information in a BGP packet and ship it across. 
the, only other way you could get IGP data in the past was to be part of your uh, part of the uh, provider's network, and that's never been a good idea because then the packets might be forwarded to you. Uh, there's always been a hesitance about that. Uh, the other piece that's really important that came to being is that the the server that's doing the collection, the software that's doing the collection, it has to be a very high performance collector. Anybody who worked on the big data, big uh, internet uh, routers is that there are hundreds of peers receiving full internet table and things are constantly changing. Uh, the collector needs to be able to keep up with this rate and also have the ability to parse this data and uh, store it. And we have, a, uh, we have a collector, OpenBMPD. My colleague, Tim Evans, uh, has written it, and that's actually been open sourced in openbmp.org, and we'll show you that quickly. And then the database, of course, uh, what technology do you use to store this data in the world of so many modern uh, technologies? And uh, that's, that part has been also challenging because you have to put all this data someplace and then you want to be able to access it and get a response back as an application developer very, very quickly. Um, and then obviously the modern APIs, you know, using REST and JSON instead of using, uh, you know, going through text and CLI output. All of these come together today to open up the doors to give, uh, for us to give the data to the application developers and make sense out of it. So I, I want to quickly mention what BMP is, BGP Monitoring Protocol. It's not BGP, it's not a routing protocol, but what you do is that you enable BMP on one of your routers with BGP peers, and then it, you tell it to talk to a BMP collector, and the router encapsulates all the BGP packets that you want to monitor in, in, a, uh, in a TCP packet with a per peer header and ships them to the collector. Uh, BMP was designed in ITF in cooperation with operators to be really uh, efficient and non-intrusive to the router. So there is never a communication from collector to the router. It's always the router configured by the operators that defines how many times, you know, how fast, how frequently the updates go out. So it's supposed to be little to no service impact. And the configuration is really simple. You just configure the IP address of the server that the BGP packets are going to go to. And then uh, if that router has 500 peers, all those five data from all those 500 peers can go to the collector. And uh, we support, BMP supports all address families. And I don't know how familiar you are with the BGP, but I see address families as representing different services for your networks. Uh, a very quick uh, description of how it works, which is what I really said. You turn on BMP, it sends the BGP packets to a collector, which then stores them in a database, and uh, users can access this data through a REST API. Or if you have a controller in your network, you can uh, use a plugin. Uh, one uh, word about uh, uh, the advantage of BMP compared to BGP, which is the traditional way the uh, data has been collected. Without BMP, when if you want to collect BGP data from a router, you establish the BGP session. Now that router has import policies. And if the, if the, uh, that router will not send you anything that it discarded, whether it's the, because of the policies or there was a malformed packet or what have you. So what you are really receiving from a BGP peer that you have established for monitoring purposes is that peer's view of the network, not necessarily what it received, but what it decided that it's going to keep in its RIP, in its database. Uh, BGP with BMP is that it actually uh, encapsulates every BGP packet hitting your network. So you can have an import policy on your router to drop all the packets, BGP routes coming in. The collector will still have a copy of that. The collector will also know which prefixes that router kept after making the decision. That means you can assess how well the router is making decisions based on the policies you configured, the efficiency of the policies. And that's a whole area that has not been explored. Um, most people have really long routing policies in their routers. 
they're long because nobody wants to remove any old policy because you're afraid you're going to break something. So you just keep adding new things. You have no idea whether they are really being used and that whole area needs to be explored and that's all memory and CPU on the router causing issues. Um, so our architecture is composed of a really high speed collector, that distributed collector that receives uh, all the BMP feeds. It's uh, very lightweight, uh, very high performance. It, it actually parses the BGP packets as it receives and inserts them into the database, different tables, and everything is indexed. And then through the APIs we give you, you are able to retrieve uh, information from the database. Uh, the collector, as I said, is open source. So if you want to play with it yourself, uh, you go to openbmp.org. And Tim Evans, my colleague, uh, actually maintains that site. Um, we also keep the raw BGP updates. Um, in the academic uh, research world, uh, there's a lot of BGP collection. They, uh, they get BGP feeds from various places, and it's all raw updates. The problem is that um, instead of spending all the time analyzing the data, they're really working to parse that data that's gigantic, and it's all uh, time-bounded. It's stateful. It's not like you can, it's not like logs. Uh, you have to actually know the sequence of events, and. Um, so this collector really gives you a way to collect data in a way that was not uh, possible before. And a quick word about scale, whenever we talk about BGP, there is Quagga, you know, there is, anybody can write a BGP software. The problem is that the scale really matters. In a normal provider network, for example, uh, you have thousands of peers, really, around your network with lots and lots of routes. And how you receive that, store that on a per peer basis is a big deal, and it's a hard task. And that's the challenge we took with this project. And I'll show you uh, what that looks like. Uh, again, the apps we think are going to be a very important part of SDN, and I really hope that it'll, uh, it'll be available to a wide range of developers uh, to uh, develop tools that are maybe not possible. You can also talk to a controller uh, using uh, Yang-based uh, interfaces, and that's the part we're also working on. And uh, finally, uh, I'm going to show you the UI that we developed to sh uh, visualize the data we've been collecting and analyzing. Everything I'm going to show in the UI is actually an API call to the database, and the response comes back as a JSON formatted data. So. Uh, we have uh, used international interns at Cisco to help us uh, uh, visualize this data, put together the UI. They did not have any routing background, but they knew what to do with JSON data. And in the process, they also learned routing. But that's, I, uh, we think the, the value of the project is that once you have access to the JSON data, there are several things you can do with it. Uh, without having to know all the standards of BGP, BMP, IGP, etc. And with that, I would like to switch to the demo, and I'd like to also invite my colleague Tim Evans. In, so you can ask questions during the demo, if you like. Thanks. Okay. So what you are looking at here is we uh, is twelve routers. And this is live network, by the way. I, we have feeds from NTT, uh, some research organizations from Cisco Science Network, thanks to Cisco Science Network, HE Level 3, uh, Telstra in Australia. We wanted to see the view coming from that part of the world. But we have 12 routers uh, with BMP enabled. Through the 12 routers, we get uh, packets from 727 peers. So 12 to 727 is uh, showing you the potential of the scale that you can achieve with a very small amount of config in your network. Uh, we have incorporated geolocation data to place these routers on the map, and this is where they are located. Um, now you can click on the BMP router, and this actually opens up a first it shows all the peers monitoring through this router, then it opens up a card that's telling you information about this particular router. It's monitoring 333 BGP peers. 
Uh, we have almost uh, equal amount of V4, V6 peers on this, the location, and the downstream ASs. The reason why the downstream ASs are showing 65,000 is that this BMP router has um, uh, an IBGP session to these uh, 333 peers. That's why uh, that's what you're seeing. Now, if you go to peer view, which uh, is really what you are monitoring, the BGP peers, uh, inside and around your network, we can actually look at the routing table of the peer. So you don't really need to go and log into the router to see what's in the routing table. You can go here. Uh, so this is the BGP peer. It opens up a card called BGP peer card. And here you can look at the uh, session details. It's an IBGP session and the port numbers. Uh, this router has uh, 200,000 uh, prefixes, both pre-rib and post-rib. What we mean by that, it accepted every prefix that it received. It didn't drop anything. It has no policies and apparently things are going well. These are the downstream ASs uh, from this peer. So we know that at this location, there are a lot of external uh, peering sessions. Now, if we go to the routing table, uh, we can look at the prefixes. And what we did is we incorporated geolocation for prefixes as well. This is a big router and it's downloading uh, the prefixes. So you can actually visualize the AS path. I mean, this is, this is not rocket science. It's really visualizing what's, what you would normally see on a BGP route. This is the AS path. What we did is that now that it's JSON formatted, you, know, you can easily visualize what uh, path you take to get to this Russian prefix somewhere in the network and uh, lots of information about that. Uh, the other, uh, so we have, some, we have some graphs. These were very low hanging fruit for us to see what's, um, what the updates coming from this particular peer are. Maybe this is not sending us the updates. Let's look at a different peer with good graphs. Look at Telstra. Photographs. So you can monitor the number of updates coming over time from your peer. Also, number of withdrawals. And we notice that the withdrawals are a whole lot less than the updates. So there's a lot of uh, updates going on without the uh, prefix actually flapping, withdrawn and re-advertised. You can also see what those, which prefixes are uh, being updated so often, and you may want to look at why. Um, and then we actually can tell you the history of that particular prefix. Uh, one of the problems with BGP is that you, when you look at the routing table, you see what's happening right at that moment, uh, but you don't know the history of it. You can turn on BGP damping, which is really cumbersome. Um, uh, with this, uh, we have uh, kept all the history of this uh, prefix uh, that ever, uh, you know, being collected, and we can tell you what's happening with that prefix. And the visualizing the what, what's changing in the prefix is a tricky business. If there is a little change in the communities, for example, it's a tiny little digit. You eyeball it, and it's very hard to tell. But when you visualize it and put it here, uh, so I can tell that in the last hour. The AS path for this particular prefix changed 37 times. And then I can look to see what that change has been in the last, uh, last uh, flap. And I can see that the AS path is changing between uh, 1239 and 174. I think one is Sprint and one is, uh, I can't remember, the old hmm? cogent. cogent. Yes, it's been flapping between these two. Um, what else would be, so we have who is uh, information uh, uh, integrated. We're also getting information from routing registries. We're in the process of collecting all of that. I think the uh, interesting one is the AS view. So you can uh, look at how your AS is connected to the uh, other ASs. Uh, we have the who's information, and then we also pull from the database the prefixes originated by this AS. This is Cisco's 109 main AS. You can look at who are your upstream ASs and downstream ASs, and based on that, you can do a little bit of visualization. 
Uh, finally, we have, well, we have several other things, but I wanted to show the link state view. So if you want to visualize your network, draw your network topology, now you can do that with BGPLS easily. Uh, you can also, this is a private lab I set in our uh, lab, lab uh, and then we put the geolocation information to show it to you nicely. But uh, this is actually, this lab is up and running right now with OSPF. The other thing you can do is that uh, we, have a, we are running SPF to see what's the best path from this particular node in our network to the other parts of the network. So this, uh, even if you are not running BGP, if you want to visualize your IGP, you can use this uh, and turning it on is quite simple by just turning on BGPLS. And that, of course, you need software that supports BGPLS, but beyond that, it's really easy. Uh, you can do some aggregation analysis, security analysis. Um, uh, the peer view, uh, not the peer view, peer analysis is also a very important and interesting one. So normally to see what, the, what you have exchanged with the peers in terms of address, families, port numbers, you go and do a show BGP neighbor. Uh, so this is what we're doing here in a way. Uh, for this peer, this is the output of show BGP neighbor. You can see the sent capabilities, receive capabilities. We didn't have time to visualize this a little bit more human readable fashion, but it's much better than right now, even logging into the router, doing show BGP neighbor and uh, looking at the results. Uh, with that, I think uh, it would be worth showing you what the data looks like uh, as we receive from the database. Do you want to show that? Yeah. All right. So all this data basically comes from um, the database via REST, and that's how we're extracting it in the um, UI. So we provide an open source, which you guys can download today, uh, DB REST. It's under um, GitHub in the uh, OpenBMP space. And you can also go to openbmp.org, and you can look at docs. Um, and before I go into some of the details, I just want to quickly highlight router configurations. So we provide some details of how to configure it on various routers. Um, as you can see, it's very small. There's not much uh, involved with actually the configuration. DB REST is the REST interface that we open sourced, and it's kind of more of an example. So you guys can play around with it. You can see how we optimize the queries. Um, we do parallel queries for many of the large queries. So you'll notice in there that we have to split up the queries and aggregate them across multiple cores. Uh, in order to take advantage of uh, the database better and the database size. Um, so you can go in here and you can actually click on any one of these. So if you were to open a new tab, um, it will load the routers. And that's the same router view that we're populating with the, um, with the map. I believe this one is with Geo. Um, Oh, it's not on this one. So we also have uh, the Geo API that's, that's uh, 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 facilitating the actual data that's shown up on our maps. Um, but in either case, you get the router view. You can also click on any one of these other ones. But if you want to see the peers, which we were just looking at a minute ago, we can look at all the peer data. Uh, this is formatting in JSON view in the browser, so it takes a second to load it. Um, all of the data sets in this particular uh, DB REST will always have the same syntax. So you always see the table name, and you always see at the very bottom, you'll see the number of uh, results that come back. So we can see we have 727 results. You always get a query time, so you can keep track of how long it's taking. This is 231 milliseconds, uh, and a fetch time, how long it takes to download it from the database to start rendering it back to the browser. So every one of the queries will follow that syntax. And you can filter most of the queries, which the details are uh, documented here. So you can specify um, which parameters you want to specify on this. So let me, let me actually go back to this. So this, it's just lowercase with geo. So this is where we get the geo coding information added to the routers. And it works for peers as well. Um, and you can incorporate any one of your databases for uh, geolocation, so if you use Maxmine, um, DBIP, whatever, 
uh, you can incorporate that data into this and you can, you can connect it and do the exact same thing to load the geolocations, um, which we do get the longitude latitude information for plotting on a map. Um, so we recommend you, know, you guys point around with some of the demo UI uh, uh, links here and you can actually mess around with it. And if you are interested in running it yourself, you can easily download it. There's instructions on um, GitHub. So let me just go to GitHub. kind of show where you can get this information. So OpenBMP Collector is here, and all the documentation is, is provided within here as well. The DB REST, which I was just showing, is here, and it goes over the same documentation that I was showing a minute ago uh, on the demo stuff, um, which also does have the details of how to install it. Um, so from this data, and I'll show like the link state information. We don't actually give out the link state SPF, but um, but let me show this. So if you go into uh, link state, so link state you will be able to get no um, nodes, nodes. You'll be able to get the link state nodes, just like you were to look at the routers. This is um, going to show us all of the link state information unfiltered. So we're seeing OSPF. We also have IS, um, IS in here, because um, we have different topologies, different labs that we have set up. You can look at the links. This is the raw data that we get for the link state information, which you guys will also get as well um, if you turn on BGPLS. And the SPF functionality, so if I click on one of these uh, peers, and I want to do an SPF on this peer, and this is specifically OSPF, I would specify peer, peer hash ID. We store everything as hash ID so we can uniquely reference it. Obviously, uh, IP addresses and everything else can be duplicate, so the only way to make sure we get the exact same item every time is we use hash IDs uh, on a bunch of different variables. So if I put OSPF and I put the router ID that I'm interested in, this will actually run an SPF specifically on this router ID, which is what we're doing in the GUI or in the UI. So that's what you saw when we clicked on a router. This basically is running the exact same thing, but it gives us the routing table uh, in JSON. We have the paths um, outlined and calculated to tell you exactly how you get to this particular um, uh, prefix. That's how we actually are plotting that in that uh, graph that you saw uh, on the demo page. If I go to link state, When we look at this here with the links, it, it plots it out with the links, but then also when you click on a router and we click on a path, and that's being drawn this way, that's being calculated based off of the path um, chain. So uh, you guys can draw the paths in a very similar fashion. So it's pretty much the demo. I'm not sure where we are on time. Any questions? Do you have any questions? We have to get a mic around, I guess. What is the size of network it supports? Like uh, how many numbers? Is that on? I can't. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 What is the size of network it supports? Like how okay, many numbers? I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Hello? Yeah, yeah, better. Yeah. So, what is the size of network it supports? Like how many number of routers uh, you can get? So, it's uh, the routers that we have right now are 12, and we have around 15 million active prefixes that we're we're monitoring and maintaining. Mm -hmm. um, right now, it depends on the size of the database. So, 16 gigs of RAM and eight cores or eight virtual CPUs can get you around 20 plus million uh, prefixes. And there's the rate is really on the number of prefixes, not so much on routers or peers. You could have 10,000 peers, and that doesn't really matter. Or 10,000 routers. That's that's a very small amount. Um, it's the number of prefixes of, of full internet routing table uh, prefixes. So multiply all those peers by 500,000 prefixes. Uh, that's where the size limitation starts to come in. Okay. Um, but again, 16 gigs of RAM covers that fine. And if you want to go higher, you just size up the database a little bit higher to, to scale that. But we need uh, one BMP router for whatever size of network. So for the BMP routers, for link state, you only need one BMP router for link state because it will just convey the actual link state for the entire topology. 
Um, for every edge router or every route reflector, you would typically turn on BMP. So it really, if it's internally collecting data, you would get it from each one of your route reflectors. And if you're doing it on your edge, you would turn on BMP from each one of the edge um, devices. So let me show uh, this page here. So as an example, you would basically turn on BMP on the routers that you're interested in getting the BGP information from. Okay. So BMP is a hardware or? It's, it's in software hardware. on the router and it basically reflects the information from the BGP peers. So it's encapsulating the BGP messages, mm -hmm. raw BGP messages um, from the peers, sending it to a collector to where we can then decode the BGP messages. Implemented in Juniper. And, and it's implemented in both Juniper and Cisco okay. today. So you can turn this on today. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, thank you very much. Can you, you <clears throat> um, th this is more than BGP because you had OSPF and ISIS in the in the link state information. Yeah. So, so it conveys more than BGP. Is that right? It it it's conveyed via BGP. Yes, because link state you can distribute link state in into BGP, and you can you can convey it as an address family. So basically, oh. we can get that information. Uh, via BGP. Okay, is that information how to how to bring the other protocols into BGP? Is that on your on your OpenBMP site or? So how you do that? It, that's that's actually just part of normal BGP link state implementation. So you basically under the routed uh, routing process, so OSPF or ISIS, you distribute link state into BGP, um, and that's only on XR right now. And and Juniper supports it, but we haven't actually tested that with Juniper, but. It's a standards-based uh, implementation, so it should work equally the same. So it's supported in, for BMP with, with native BGP, non-link state. It's supported in XE, uh, XE312 and above, and it's supported in XR522 and above. Uh, Juniper BMP is supported um, in 10. Dot, um, I forget which 10.r 10, 10 release or whatever. Um, but the most current version is 13.3, and that has the latest draft. And I don't know when they introduced link state. Um, XR is uh, the only uh, supported platform for link state right now. It's not supported right now uh, in NXOS. Depends on the customer request. I guess they haven't had the request. Yeah, if you make a request, we can get it, yeah. We have the hashing, so and it's just a standard MD5. In fact, you can do the MD5 in database. They, uh, the database has an MD5 capability as well as a function. Um, you can run MD5 hashing out, out of band. You can do it as MD5 sum in a Linux command uh, process. Yeah. Yeah. So can we take this offline because I think yeah. we need to yeah. go on. But please, yeah. uh, we are right yeah. here. Okay, thank you. Let's talk about Okay, thanks. Thank you all. Let's take it. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Okay.